forest primeval. A bird's eye view of the vast forest wilderness in the interior of Newfoundland from which pulpwood has been drawn for 50 years to feed the newsprint mill at Grand Falls. Here are the trees crashing to earth under the bite of the saw and the men who work through the heat of summer and the chill of winter in the distant timberland. I tell you today, oh, middle London, the times it is read by each man. But little they think of the fellows that go the wood on Mary Ann. For paper is made out of paper, and many things for you may know. And long may our men live to drive it. The old reliable buck saw is fast giving way to the chain saw, which has its own motor and is started up in the same way as an outboard engine. The power saw bites cleanly and quickly into the tree and speeds up the logger's output greatly both in felling the trees and cutting them into the standard four-foot length. In every camp, there is a saw filer, and there will be until the power saw takes over completely. When the logger has reduced the trees to easily handled lengths, he stacks them into neat piles for inspection and measurement by the scalers. The standard of measurement is a cord, a pile of wood four feet deep by four feet high by eight feet long. Cutting is done mostly in the summer and fall, and when winter comes, the haul-off begins. Oh, brother, you wouldn't get away with lighting that pipe in summer. Only in the winter time is smoking permitted in the woods because of the danger of fire. Horses and sleds are used to haul the wood to the riverbanks. Also tractor trains and trucks. Logs are dumped onto the ice of the river to await the spring breakup when the swollen currents swish the wood downstream on its way to the mill. Very often on the drive, men with long poles have to help the logs along and clear the jams on the curves. Sometimes it takes a tractor to nudge the wood on its way. Throughout the logging areas, there are dams big and small, made of concrete and of wood, so that the flow of water in the rivers can be controlled by raising or lowering the gate. Here's another bird's eye view. It's a log boom at Gamble. Here, as at Terra Nova, the logs are taken by rail to Grand Falls. They're to be unloaded into the mill pond. Where there is no current, a boat has to do police work and keep the logs moving. Finally, the logs are on their way up the jack ladders to the mill and the destiny for which they grew tall and straight as trees in the forest. To be freed of bark in the drum barkers, mashed to pulp in the grinders, and then mixed with sulfite to form newsprint. Some of the logs go 
back to the stockpiles for use in the winter time. A network of private roads is necessary throughout the timber limits of a paper company in Newfoundland. Woods roads leading to the tall timber are essential for the transport of men and materials. Today, modern machinery is used in the road building, and the newer roads are pretty much up to highway standards. Cars and trucks line up in front of the campsites at mealtime and in the evenings, just as they do on Main Street Saturday night in the town. It's a sign of the times and a far cry from the old days. Woods camps are also a far cry from what they used to be. Food is wholesome and there is plenty of it. It's home away from home for the logger who spends 76 days a year on the average in the camps. on the go when work is done. For some, it's a quiet read or a smoke in the bunker. Payday comes before too long, and that makes everything worthwhile. Loggers in the A&D camps in 1957 earned a total of $5,226,000. That's a lot of money. And it's interesting to note that Newfoundland loggers enjoy the highest wage scale in eastern Canada, believe it or not. Wherever he lives, in Bishop's Falls or Bay Largent, Hearts Content or Hearts Ease, the Newfoundland logger has a comfortable home to return to after a spell in the woods. There is always a church nearby where he and the family can worship and a school for his children. The little ones have more of the good things of life than ever before thanks to good earnings by the breadwinners and social security benefits. Many of the homes are equipped with modern conveniences and cozy living rooms in which to relax after the day's tour. And here is the heart of it all, Grants, the mill, and the town it's proud of. In the last 50 years, this pioneer newsprint mill of Newfoundland has paid out in wages, purchases, and services within the island the staggering total of $357 million. Inside the Anglo-Newfoundland Development Company mill, which is fed with pulpwood by loggers working from the four divisions of Badger, Bishop's Falls, Millertown, and Terranova, giant paper machines hum through the day and night turning out 800 tons of newsprint every 24 hours. At the wet end of the machine, a very moist pulp races over a wire mesh at the rate of 1,500 feet a minute until it gradually and miraculously forms into a solid sheet of newsprint. Wrapped in rolls and labeled for newspapers in many distant places, the Newfoundland newsprint goes aboard ship at Botwood, a product made from the wealth of wood in the forest from the raw materials taken out of the backlands by our hardy lumberjacks.